All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Butt Down Fellowship. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Uh, uh, we uh, thank God for each and every one of you that are here. Uh, thank God for uh, uh, all of you. Uh, thank God for the mothers who had to play the part of a father. Uh, thank God for you also. Uh, we thank God for the ministry uh, and as we continue to go forth to seek truth. Uh, this morning we're going to continue with the uh, God's plan and purpose. Uh, we're right at the end here. Uh, if you have your packets, right at Hebrews through Jude, uh, the books that we're about to cover now. Uh, if you don't have one, they're over here. Uh, Hebrews through Jude is the books that we're about to cover now. Uh, before we go ahead and get started, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. We thank you for who you are. Father God, we ask for now to just continue to bless, uh, continue to bless us, oh God. Continue to strengthen us. Help us to redeem the time for the days of evil. We thank you for this time of fellowship. Uh, Father God, we just ask for now to just continue to bless this ministry. Bless each and every individual, uh, individually as well as collectively. Hell, help us to stand boldly before the throne of grace. Father God, we ask that you to touch each and every member's situation, oh God. Uh, for you know what they're going through. You know what they need from you. Uh, we ask, I ask right now that you give them the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep their minds and hearts in Christ Jesus. We ask right now to just continue to uh, uh, help us, Father God, to, uh, to, uh, to take pride and, Father God, take uh, glory in the hope that we uh, so wish for, oh God, and that the day we will be resurrected and our vile bodies will be made glorious like unto yours. We ask right now that you just continue to uh, bless those who are sick amongst us. Uh, uh, touch them right now, heal them. But, Father God, most importantly, uh, give us strength, O oh God, those of us who are family members of those who are sick. Give us strength right now. Help us to accept your will, uh, whatever that will may be. We ask for now to just continue to reach out, Father God. Bless marriages, O oh God. Uh, sanctify one another, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Hebrews through Jude. Uh, now, when we talk about these books... When you break down the Bible, especially uh, as far as the uh, three dispensations that Paul talks about, uh, time past, but now, and the ages to come. Uh, we've covered Genesis through the book of Acts, which represents time past. Uh, Romans through Philemon, Paul's epistles represents the but now. Uh, and the books of Hebrews through, Jew, uh, Hebrews through Revelation uh, represent the ages to come. Now understand, most people think that Revelation is the last book written. Uh, because it's at the end of your Bible. Uh, but when you really study this out, understand the books of Hebrews to Revelation were actually written during the Acts time period, right? Because Hebrews to Revelation would have been preparing that little flock to go through the tribulation because that's what Hebrews to Revelation deals with, right? Now, now that we have a, a, a change in God's plan and purpose uh, for the world, for the ages, and for time, now, these books are, are put on hold just like the rest of Israel's program. Uh, most people like to go to the book of Hebrews. Uh, most people say that Paul wrote it. Uh, as far as I know, God wrote it because that, his name is at the beginning of it. So whether Paul wrote it or not, uh, it's really, uh, uh, I don't believe that he did, but I can, I can see why people say he did. So uh, uh, it, it, that's neither here nor there. People get into arguments about that. That's neither here nor there who wrote the book. Uh, the thing about it is that God wrote it. He wanted the Hebrew people to understand and get back to him. That's why it says God at sundry times at the beginning of Hebrews 1 and 1. Now, he, the doctrine contained in Hebrews is, is, is uh, similar to the new covenant in which they'll receive out here. Because it talks about that a lot in the book of Hebrews, right? Uh, so as we begin to see this, when you read Hebrews to Revelation, it begins to show you the things that would have happened had God not changed our program. I uh, had not brought in our program, and because their uh, program is put on hold, it's going to show you the things that will happen. So when you study it, you can't just read it and study it as if those things are happening today. I was uh, uh, reading somebody's post uh, on, through Facebook, and they were saying that we're living, uh, and uh, they were talking about the shooting that went on. Uh, uh, God bless those people's families, uh, that shooting that went on in, uh, in Charleston. Uh, and they were saying that we're living in the, in the and the time, we're living in the end times right now. See, this, this talks about this and 
You know, in Matthew 24, it talks about this and rumors of wars and wars and, and all these things. But and, and I wrote back to her, when you look at Matthew 24, it says the rumors and wars is just the beginning. That's not the end. Rumors and wars have been going on for 2,000 years. That's no, that's no sign. We don't see the signs of the time because we don't live in the time of the signs. You see that? So there's no way those things can be happening now because we don't live in that time. And we won't. You see that? And we won't live in those times. Understand that if you think it's bad today, you better get saved. Amen. Because it's going to be a hundred times worse out here. You see that? So, 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 but, but when you, so when you look at these events that are going on in Hebrews, the relation, it's not talking to us today. Now, just like the scriptures that were written before, we can learn from these things. We can glean some truths from it as far as uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, principles that are involved in these scriptures that we can take from it. But as we begin to look at this, go to Hebrews. As we begin to look at this, we're going to see that these books are Hebrew epistles written by the believing Jews during the time period of the Acts. And these verses are going to help us to understand that these books were written to Israel not to the body of Christ. Look at Hebrews. Look at chapter number 2. Uh, as a matter of fact, go to 1 and 1 real quick. Hebrews 1 and 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past, unto the fathers by the prophets. Now, this verse is letting us know that God wrote the book, or had someone write it, but he did not want to reveal the author, so he put himself in there. Right? It says, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in what? Time past. Time past. So he's going back to time past in order to continue something that already was. Right? Uh, unto the fathers by the prophet. Had in these what? Last days. Last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the what? Worlds. Worlds. Now, go back to, real quick, uh, go back to Acts. Go back to Acts chapter Acts chapter number 2. Look at verse 17. Acts 2, 17. And it shall come to pass in the what? Last days. The last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit. Now, he's quoting Joel, right? Joel speaks about the last days. But the last days of what? What is he speaking about? The last days of what? What is he speaking about? The last days. When, when Peter is talking in Acts 2 about the last days and about the uh, 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 prophecy of Joel coming to pass, what is he talking about? Huh? He's talking about this, these are the last days out here. So we're not living in the last days. Right? We're not living in the last days. When the Bible specifies this, the last days, the time, the, uh, the day of the Lord, all those things, that's out here. We're not living in those times, right? Go back to Joel real quick. So that's during the kingdom period. I'm sorry? So that's during the kingdom period? Yes, yes, which we won't be here for that. Go to Joel chapter 2 real quick. Only, only parts of Joel's prophecy happened. Yes. The program got put on hold. Yes. Yep. Just like Matthew 24, some of that stuff happened through it. Exactly. Yeah. 20. No, no, no. Matthew 24 didn't. It did. No, no, it didn't. But, but uh, Joel, yes. Go to Joel chapter number two. I saw you here. Well, we, we do have signs leading up to the tribulation. Uh, what's that? Do we do have signs leading up to the tribulations? Not so much signs, mm -hmm. but you. Can, I would say the stage is being set. Stage, yeah. yeah, the stage is being set. 
Uh, not so much science because we, we, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, so, but you can tell, you know, the days are getting more wicked and more evil. Uh, you can tell that uh, 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 something is going on. The stage is being set, but we don't get entangled into the affairs of this, of this world, you know. Uh, most people watch the news and just completely go crazy, you know. And so uh, uh, whenever, uh, whenever you're watching a, a, a show on TV, a sports event, you notice that it always gives you those news flashes. Uh, coming up at 11, you know, and, and it, it's never anything good. It says coming up at 11 after the game, you know, such and such as escape from prison or some, somebody's killed somebody. It's always something to get your attention that's negative. They're only showing you things that's negative. Because if somebody says coming up at 11, such and such gave to the homeless, gave to the poor, nobody's going to stay up to watch that, right? But if you tell somebody somebody's getting killed, somebody's escaped from prison, people are, are glued into that because that's what, that's what you want to see. Right? So understand, uh, look at Joel chapter 2. Look at verse 28. So this is what Peter is quoting here. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Drop down to verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the no Lord. Lord come. That's the last days. Yeah. Right? So, go back to Hebrews 1. So, when Hebrews 1 picks up, it's picking up in the what? In the last days. So since we're not living in the last days, this is not talking to us, right? Now, we are living in the, uh, uh, the resurrection or the rapture is imminent for us, but we're not living in the last days of the end of time. But we're in the church age. Yes, you can say that. So it goes from, the prophecy goes from, it, it bypasses the church age when it goes into the last days. It goes from one end, like Joel speaking of the last days, there is no mention of the church age. Exactly. So from the, uh, the books of the Acts on, do they mention of the church age or it goes straight into the tribulation? Straight to the tribulation, yeah. It, it never, because it was, it was kept secret. So it was never prophesied about that the church would be going through any of this. Only, it was only prophesied that Israel would go through that, the time of Jacob's trouble, right? And so Jacob, whenever the Bible speaks about Jacob, it's talking about Israel and their flesh. Whenever they're, speak, whenever they're the children of Israel or the remnant of Israel, it's talking about them in their spiritual state. You see that? So Jacob's trouble is to uh, uh, bring God's wrath on unbelieving Israel. You see that? That's why the remnant there will not grow through great tribulation. They'll be saved out of great tribulation, but they'll still have to go through the beginning of it. You see that? So, so it never talks about the church age, right? Uh, now, go to uh, Hebrews 2. Go to Hebrews chapter number 2. Look at verse 3 here. How shall what? We, we, escape. we escape. So that means the author is included in this. Ah. Right? That's Which good. is why I don't believe that Paul wrote this. Right? Because he's including himself in the doctrine. Right now. Having said that, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which at the first began to be spoken by who? The Lord. By the Lord. When the Lord began to speak about salvation and the kingdom of heaven being at hand, who was the audience? Israel. Israel. So this can't be talking about anything new for us, right? Because uh, remember, the Lord even told them that they, they that endure to the end shall be what? Saved. So how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that what? Mm -hmm. What were the qualifications of being an apostle? Yeah, be you had to be with him 
You had to see it, be there for his resurrection, and you had to have walked with him since his birth. So when it says, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, who were the only people to hear it? What Paul? Now, Paul did receive revelations from the Lord and his, when he was in his glorified state. But those that walked with him were not Paul. It was Peter and the other 12, right? So understand what this is saying. Look at verse 4. God also bearing them witness, both with what? Signs. Signs and wonders, and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Go to Mark chapter 16 real quick. Go to Mark chapter 16. So he says that God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders. Who were signs and wonders for? Amen. Divers miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Uh, what did I just say? Mark, Mark. Mark 16. Look at verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is what? Amen. Baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these... Signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink and did any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall what? Is any of this going on today? Now, I know people, it, it, it seems that way. But we, I, I read about even a, a pastor that went out, uh, uh, him and his father. His father was a pastor too. Uh, uh, met playing with snakes. The snake bit them and they both died. Snake salvation. Yeah, they, they, yeah, the snake salvation or whatever it was called. And so the snakes bit them. Listen, this is not anything to tempt God with. You see what I mean? Like this is, why would you go out and handle a venomous snake just to see if God could do it? That's why it's called faith. Right? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's why it's called faith. We trust the word of God. We don't have to say, well, God, if, you, if this is you, I need you to sit down. I need you to do it for me. And then you get bit by a snake and you die. That's just not using common sense. Right? So understand, and then the audience of who this is talking to. It's not talking to the body of Christ. Does this tie into uh, Matthew 7, 21, 22? Or not? Matthew 7? 21, 22. Uh, what does that I say? What did I say? We cast out devils in your name. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when he sent them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does, does, that, does that tie into that? Right? Yes, it does. Because he said, uh, oh, ye of little faith. Because they couldn't do those things. But they had the power to. You see that? I'm not talking about the ones that said it, that we did all this in your name. He said, I tell you, depart from me. Oh, yeah. depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I knew you not. Is that what you're talking does about? Does that tie into this at all or not? For that reason you just said. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there will be people, especially out here, that are going to be doing all these things that, you know, that tell people to come. Because even the Antichrist is going to be doing that. Performing signs and right, miracles right, and doing all right, these right, things. Right, right. Uh, and people are going to be doing it in his name, but they're, they're not going to know who he is. Right? They're not going to, they, well, Christ is not going to know who they are. They're just going through the motions. They're just going through the motions. Exactly. Yeah. Just like people today. People are zealous about God today, but they lack knowledge. And people are going to church every day. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing the, they're going through the motions, but they're really not gaining a relationship because they don't know the word or they don't know truth, right? Uh, so, so that's what that's talking about there. Go back to, uh, so, so the book of Hebrews, and obviously the book of Hebrews is written to the Hebrew people, hence the name, the Hebrews, right? Uh, now, go to the book of James, the next book. Look at James uh, 1 and 1. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to who? Twelve. Twelve. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, what? Greeting. Greeting. Now, who is James writing to? Twelve tribes. The twelve tribes, right? Now, go to Acts chapter 8. I'm going to show you something. Acts chapter 8. 
Because notice that James is writing to the 12, 12 tribes that are what? Scattered abroad. All right, watch this. Acts chapter 8, look at verse 1. This is after the stoning of Stephen. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the who? Now, why didn't the apostles scatter? They were, told they, were told to stay they were told not to, and they had seen the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. So if you had seen Jesus and he said, don't move, you probably wouldn't have moved either. Right? So even though there's great persecution going on, even us today, that's why Paul says, be unshakable, be uh, 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 unmovable, steadfast. Right? Don't let anything shake you because you know truth. All this stuff that's going on today, it can't shake you. Right? Because the, the, uh, 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 it reminds me of the story of Job. God allowed the devil to take everything away from Job, but just don't touch him. Things may be going on bad around you, but we have salvation as a present possession. And we're hoping, uh, uh, waiting on the, the, the hope of glory, the resurrection. So we don't have anything to, 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 to allow anything to move us. Look at uh, Acts 8 and drop down to verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the what? Word. Preaching the word. So that means they went everywhere preaching the word, and so now they're preaching to everybody, Jews and Gentiles, right? Because now this fulfills Matthew 28. Go ye into all the world, preaching and baptizing in, in my name, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Great Commission. That's being fulfilled, right? According to this verse. Now. Go to Acts 11. The book of Acts is a book uh, 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 that kind of rehashes information. What God will do is he'll give you a little bit, tell another story, and then come back to the original story. So we just read that they scattered because of persecution. They went out to uh, 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 where they were abroad scattered and preaching the what? Preaching the word. Now Acts 11 and look at verse 19. Because Acts 9, what happens? Saul. Saul gets saved. Acts 10, what happens? Cornelius. Peter goes to Cornelius. So now Acts, so those were two important events. So God is said, well, I need to get these in there. Now I'm going to go back to Acts 8 and try to pick up that story again. Look at Acts 11, and this is why God wants you to study his word, not just read it. Look at Acts 11 and 19. Now they which were scattered. scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about who? So this is going back to Acts 8 now. Traveled as far as Phineas and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but who? The Jews. Unto the Jews only. So you have Acts 8 and 4 that says they're going out preaching the word and they were, because of the scat persecution they were scattered. But Acts 11 and 19 is giving you further revelation of who they were preaching to when they were out there. And it was only to the who? Yeah. To the Jews only. So go back to James 1 and 1. So the book of James was written during the same time of this persecution. So who do you think he went out and who do you think he wrote to? The Jews only. Right? Right? Look at James 1 and 1 again. James is serving of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. The same tribes that were scattered, the same people that went out ministering, were doing it only unto the Jews. These books are for a future time period, but they had to be written in order for the Bible to be complete. That's why you have to rightly divide it. Because you can, be taught, you can preach from James and be teaching the right word of God. But it's just in the wrong dispensation. These are not God's instructions for people to, for the body of Christ today. Right? Look at, go to the next book. 1 Peter. First Peter 1 and 1. 
Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, we just read in Acts 11 and 19, they went as far as what? Phineas and uh, 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 Galapagos and all these different places. So who is Peter speaking to? They're the same people, right? Speaking to the same people. Go to 2 Peter. Uh, look at chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of what? Amen. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, at us the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days. Last days. So now, we just read in 1 Peter 1 and 1 who his audience was, those that were scattered. So he's telling them, now I'm writing you to a second epistle to the same people I wrote the first one to. And the same people I wrote the first one to would understand about the last days. Because Peter actually spoke on this in Acts 2. Right? So understand, he, the audience is still the same. The audiences are still the same. Go to the next book. 1 John. Go to chapter number 2. Look at verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his what? Commandments. commandments. Now, the body of Christ is not under any commandments or, or law. But notice what he says here. He says we know him if. If is a conditional statement. If this happens, then this will happen. The if-then clause, right? So if we keep the commandments, then we can know him. But Paul tells us in Romans 6 and 14, for we're not under the law, but we're under grace. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, but if any man consider himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge. Acknowledge means to accept as truth. Let him acknowledge that the commandments that I write are the commandments of the Lord. Right? And so Paul's commandments is, we're not under the law. We're under grace. So whose commandments do we follow to know Christ? That's where you have to rightly divide. Right? Look at verse 4 here. He that said, I know him, and keep it not his commandments, is a what? And the truth is not in him. <laughs> but whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that said he abided in him, ought him himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new what? Unto you, but in what? Old commandment, which were given back here. Which had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the what? Who heard this word from the beginning? Israel. Gentiles didn't hear this word from the beginning. This word was given to Israel. I've heard this scripture a lot in the old churches, bro. Oh, definitely, yeah. But it's like, it's amazing how they skip way to the back in John, but yet, you know, in between the books, the transition book of Acts all the way through Philemon, it's like they, they missed that part. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't understand it, so they just didn't want to focus on it. Uh, and and part, a part of it is just uh, an understanding. Because a lot of, just take uh, what you know as a young man. A lot of what you know is predicated upon what your parents taught you, mm -hmm. right? That's why you have parents to teach you right from wrong, to teach you how to live this life as best as they know how, right? right. So a lot of people that are preachers in certain churches are, are teaching what they've been taught. Mm -hmm. So if I've been taught not to really study the Bible and rightly divide it, I won't teach that. Yeah. You see what I mean? So that's why you have a lot of preachers, right? Preachers oftentimes are not the example of the biblical word. To preach means to warn and exhort. But most preachers preach what they hear. You can only teach what you know, right? 
Most people can't teach you the Bible, but they can preach it to you because they're preaching what they've heard. You teach what you know. And, and a lot of this, you've been, we've been trained to think a certain way. Whatever culture you were brought up in, whatever, uh, whoever your parents are, you've been trained to think a certain way. Uh, it, it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. I'm not saying it's good or bad. What I'm saying is that you've been trained a certain way, right? Now, the church that we, I grew, we grew up in, they trained us a certain way as far as the Bible. Mm -hmm. We were trained really not to ask any questions. We were trained really to whatever they say, that's what it means. But when you take a deeper look at it, right, because... I mean, we don't even scratch the surface. So the, I don't know what they were doing, but we don't even scratch the surface. And we're going through verse by verse, right? But when you understand, if you've been taught how to do something a certain way, that's what you're going to do. So most people, when they go to church, because they've been taught and accustomed to a certain thing, mm -hmm. where in the Bible does it speak about uh, uh, music and dancing and uh, praise oh, dancing and all this stuff in the church? Where does it speak about that at? Well, you think about David. Yeah. It's like David. Okay, but that wasn't in the church. No. And, and the reason he was dancing was because he had just yeah. won a war. So yeah. understand that there, there are things that we do in the church culturally, which has nothing to do with the Bible. But you've been taught that way, so you've come accustomed to it. Right. You see what I mean? And then to teach the dispensation of grace, it will, almost well, it will seemingly contradict all of that we've been taught. Yes, exactly. So because yeah. when you read the book of Nehemiah, chapter uh, 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 8, uh, uh, it talks about when they went or gathered together, uh, they would read the word and they would comprehend it. Mm -hmm. They didn't. All they did was just read the scrolls. That's they didn't do all this other stuff that we do in church today. All night. All they, that's all they did was read the scrolls, right? But because of the culture that you grew up in, or whoever you grew up under, church was uh, you were accustomed to the way they had church, mm -hmm. right? So when most people come here, it's a little uncomfortable because all we do is teach and ask questions. Because when you go to church, that's what God wants you to gain. Right. Not an emotional satisfaction, Amen. which you can get at a, 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 a Charlie Wilson concert, yeah. but he wants you to gain a spiritual uh, 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 acceptation, right? Yeah. So, But you can only gain spiritual and sanctification through the word. John 17 and 17 says, Sanctify them by thy truth, and thy truth is thy word. So the only way you come, become sanctified is not through an emotional roller coaster, but through a spiritual one, right? And that's how the Holy Ghost teaches today, by comparing spiritual with spiritual, right? Uh, but good question. So now, so understand, these books are being written to, go to 2 John. Yes. Like you say, coming up in the church, you were taught a certain way, uh -huh. expressions or um, anything like that, you just went with what you said to do. Uh -huh. So, when the transition came for you uh -huh. that changed when you learned the truth, mm -hmm. was it how hard was it for you to um, <laughs> to accept that, knowing what you've been taught? It was it was very difficult, and I'm gonna tell you why it's difficult, which is why I understand when I talk to certain people. It was very difficult because these are people I love and I grew up under, people who I looked up to, people who I held in such high esteem, right? And then to find out that their words were not lining up with scripture. And then when I asked them about it, they, had, they either had no answer or told me, don't worry about it. That, that, that really, it didn't really hurt. It disappointed me. You know what I mean? It disappointed me because once you know truth, I'm going to follow Christ rather than a man any day. So it didn't hurt me per se, but it did disappoint me. Because I figured that these people were in and going to church in positions to help other people come to Christ and know Christ. But come to find out, they were in positions for all the, all the wrong things. Right? We had a, 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 we had a guy from the other church, uh, just saw him recently. We had a guy from the other church say that uh, we, we invited him to come over to this church. He said, well, I can't really be, you know, I can't really come over there because I might mess up my support system. Because the people that support me, if they know I was over there, that is, the, that is, and this is why a lot of times I don't talk to people over there. Because that right there will make me say something I don't want to say. 
So you you won't come over here to fellowship with us because you're worried about somebody that's going to not stop giving you money? That I mean, that's just that is a stupid answer to me, to be honest, right? But and that that just makes no sense to me. All because we're preaching truth, right? And so what happens is it's 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 difficult to leave because my thought process at the time was I'll just teach it to him behind closed doors and he'll teach it because he wants to know truth. That's what I always thought. He wants to know truth. And I remember Bird first told me, Bird said, you're going to be out of that church in no time. And I was like, man, you crazy. My pastor, gonna, he's going to get it because he bought this word. But come to find out, most people, don't really, most people don't really want to know truth. They want reassurance that what they have been taught is truth. And that's the difficult thing. Isn't that, isn't that the same as Israel? They didn't want to break tradition or religion yep. to hear the word of Christ. Yep. So basically, it was a, it was a hard thing to do to, for thousands of years since you did exactly. Where well, we're talking about maybe hundreds of years exactly through, through religion. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so when you try to break that, you know, of course you're going to run into you're going to run into some opposition. Yeah, yeah. And it could be family. In my case, it was family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how hard it is to break tradition with family? Not, yeah. not to just make a church. Yeah, yeah. Because I came from a Baptist background. Yeah. And um, ain't nobody get none of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and, and what what still baffles me to this day is that people who claim that the word of God is their final authority, they love the word, it's the word, the word, the word, but when you're talking about the Bible, they don't want to talk about it. I, I, I just find that very baffling, because if you have a question about the Bible, as a teacher of God's truth, my job is to answer it. As a matter of fact, go to uh, 2 Peter. When people don't want to, you know, discuss scripture, this is the verse that I give them. Because if they're really seeking God uh, uh, and following God as they're supposed to, they would obey all of the word. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. What did I say? Okay, 1 Peter, I'm sorry. Uh, 15. 1 Peter 3 and look at 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready what? Always. always. What does always mean? All the time. No matter when it is. Always what? To give, to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and what? So how is it that you don't want to discuss the Bible if I have a question as it pertains to your salvation? These people don't, pastors and bishops, they don't even discuss it. And I, and I take them straight to this verse, and I ask them to read it to me. What does this verse say? Because the hope that, that is within you, as far as salvation is concerned, is important. We're not talking about a, a church doctrine. We're talking about soul salvation. This is something serious. So when I ask you a question, it behooves you to follow this scripture and give me an answer. Because it, it's not talking about something just a, a little small little, or, or church doctrine that I wrote on a board. This is talking about soul salvation. If I ask you what is the gospel of your salvation, and you say, well, I know I'm saved. Okay, but how are you saved? Well, I don't need to discuss that with you. It's between me and God. No, no, no. no. That's what this verse is saying. I, I, I just, I, it just baffles me. That you don't know. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the hardest thing for any man, especially to do, is admit that he doesn't know something. Or to admit that he's wrong about something. Just human nature, period. You don't want we don't like correction. When somebody's telling us that we've done something wrong, we don't like that. It's just human nature. You don't like correction. Are we looking at this the same way as Israel looked at it? Because they should have known. We should have known. <laughs> they should have known who Christ was. They should have, yeah. Key words, should have. Okay, and we go to the church today, they should have known about the body of Christ. Well, a, a lot of them, and an answer a lot of them will give you is, I know about the body of Christ. Why hide it? <laughs> but, uh, but you got to understand, every preacher today says that we're part of the body of Christ. Every preacher, I, I don't know any preacher that doesn't say that. 
So how do you, what do you say there? They're going to tell you that we're a part of the body of Christ. So also as that, question, we're the bride of Christ how? too. How? Huh? Yeah. Justify. <laughs> also as that, that, we're the bride of Christ too. Yeah, they add and that they, too. And the spiritual Israel. They're all yeah. three of them. Yeah, they add that. And, and, and what you have to understand is this is why it takes study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Most people are ashamed at what they don't know. Because they have not studied to show themselves approved and rightly divide the word of truth, right? I don't know everything, but I'm studying every day constantly. And when people ask me a question, I'm confident that the scriptures will be able to answer it. Now, if they don't want to adhere to what the scriptures are saying, then nothing I'm going to be able to do for you. Okay, let's see now. Israel was blinded at one time, right? So that they didn't even see the truth, correct? Or is that in the near future? Yeah, that's in the near future. They're blinded now. They weren't blinded back here when God was giving them the, his, his oracles. They weren't blinded back there. You see that? So they are now. That's I did when I opened up the scriptures. Well, let's open to interpretation. I get that a lot. Bro. Let's open that, to what? Uh, so the Bible was open to all interpretation. Oh, yeah. Go to Peter. That's when I get, when, when you're showing the exact oh, yeah. scripture, uh -huh. they will say, well, that's open to my interpretation, your interpretation. Uh, all right, well, interpretation. well, good. See, the, the, thank you, Pastor. The Bible has has it all figured out. Go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. <laughs> And I actually, somebody actually said that to me in the old church that I was at. Mm -hmm. And I actually had to give them this verse. Because what they told me was, uh, what did she say? Oh, yeah, I, I was ex really explaining right division. And she said, well, maybe we need to get the pastor's interpretation. And so, you know, I just said, okay, well, and then I quoted this verse here. But look at 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse uh, Look at verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any what? Private interpretation. Private interpretation. You can't read this and get a private interpretation. You just can't do it. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man. This Bible wasn't interpreted by man. So how can you get your own interpretation of it? Mm. But the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the what? The by the Holy Ghost. Listen, there's no, you can't read this and say, well, that's your interpretation. I have mine. It's not about my interpretation of yours. It's about the only one that matters, God's has nothing to do with what you think it means or what I think it means. That's why when you ask a question to me, what do I do? Go to the page. Because it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the Bible says. Amen. So, all right, in the old church, every time when we was um, in the Bible study on Sunday school, uh -huh. they would say, oh, every time you read a scripture, you're going to get a different interpretation. Interpretation, yeah. I actually you know, said that so, before, too. <laughs> <laughs> but but what happens is this the scriptures the reason that the scriptures are so germane or, or relevant today is the it's because it's a living word it's a living word so you can read something and it becomes alive in your life there are a lot of things god I, I, god will never leave us nor forsake us if i read that no matter how many times i read it it could be comforting every time i read it Depending on what I'm going through, because I know he'll never leave me nor forsake me. You see that? So it's not a new interpretation. It's just a, a, a living word that applies to your life at different times. That's why the Bible is the only relevant book after all these years. But just the word doesn't change. The word itself and the spiritual meaning of that word never changes. Because God wrote it with the, with, with the uh, 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 inspired by, it was inspired by God. And whatever it says now, it meant when he said it the first time. It's just that it's living, because the living word and the written word are the same. What I was going to say is also, in the church that we came from, we were taught to read. Uh -huh. Which is totally different from study. Yeah, uh -huh. And if you read something... Depending on whatever you're going through that day or that week, it is going to mean something different from when you read it again and you're on a totally different 
feel it. Yeah. But when you study it out and you have the facts that this is what this means, regardless of how I feel, there you go. it changes everything. There you go. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's, a, that's a good point because most people read the Bible or even go to church based on how the Bible or church is going to make them feel. So, so, they, so they're chasing a, a, a emotional, uh, a fleshly gratification, which a lot of times, if you really read this word and study it, and to be honest with yourself, you're not going to feel good after reading it. Yeah. Now, your, your soul may rejoice, but the flesh is not going to feel good because a lot of this stuff is talking against what you like to do. Yeah. You see that? So, 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 so it, it, it's a dynamic that that's why the spirit, the spirit lusted against the flesh and the flesh lusted against the spirit. That's why it's a constant battle. You notice when you do something wrong and you don't want to pick up the Bible? Why is that? You notice when you do something wrong and you don't want to pick up the Bible? You don't want to pick it up. But really, when you do something wrong, you should dive in there. You, you see what I mean? But, it, but it's the exact, when we do something that we know we aren't supposed to be doing, we're always in secret. And private. But when you're doing something that you know you should be, you're out because you're free to do it. Right? So understand that's the same, that's the same way when it comes to the word in the scriptures. It's not based on feeling. Because you should be able to study this word when you're mad, when you're upset, when you're angry, when you did something wrong, when you're guilty. All of this covers that. That's why it's here. Right? Uh, go to uh go to Jude. Go to Jude. We'll, we'll finish this. Go to Jude, look at verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of who? To them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and what? Now go to verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. Who was he talking to? It's a warning. It's a warning to the people who were delivered out of Egypt. Who was delivered out of Egypt? Mm-hmm. The children of Israel. That's why when John talks, to, uh, uh, Jesus talks to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he says that you must be born again. That's not a term for the body of Christ today. Because to be born again, that means you had to first be what? Born. When was Israel first born? When God brought them out of the land of Egypt. He birthed them as a nation, right? Now, they have to be born again of the spirit and water. We talked about the water baptism uh, the last two weeks, right? The water baptism was was for the remission of, it was for repentance and the remission of sins. They had to first be washed in order to be sanctified. That was their program. Our washing is not a natural physical one, but it's a spiritual one, which is done by the Holy Ghost, right? By the regeneration.